Hello, welcome to component-based theming in Drupal 8. My name is Evan Wellheit, and I'm a senior front-end engineer at Four Kitchens. And I'm creating this series uh, because currently, while this topic is popular, there's not a whole lot out there that helps you walk through how to take component-based practices in front-end and to build out a Drupal theme. And so what I hope to do in this video to show the why, to show the problems with the old way of doing what we used to do in terms of template-based theming, um, to describe the new way to describe component-based theming, and then to give a really simple example of how to do that in a, in a Drupal template. And uh, so yeah, let's get started. So first, the why. The old way of theming, which is actually something that we can see here in the templates folder of the stable theme, uh, is to organize your markup uh, based on uh, the system that it's being built in, in this case, Drupal 8. And so there are some naming conventions in Drupal 8 uh, that if you're a Drupal developer, you're familiar with. So there's uh, content under here that's gonna contain like your node templates, um, things that are related to content on the website, blocks, there are block level templates that are gonna contain uh, things that have to do with blocks in the Drupal uh, building system. Uh, views, of course, and so on and so forth. So these are all driven by the system that they're built on. So the problem with that is as our field grows and as front-end developers get more specialized, they oftentimes don't have uh, experience building in specific systems. Um, the unicorn uh, people who had knowledge in a lot of different fields and who had uh, sort of a a wide breadth of knowledge who could know, under, know and understand Drupal and build out a front end on it. That While that is a, a coveted skill set still, um, I think for us to be uh, working towards a better future, we need to think about folks who are just specialized in being front end developers, who are focusing their uh, mental energy and their uh, research in that direction. Um, it's just naturally uh, where we're going in our field. So with that said, um, the wider front-end world has been focused on component-based theming for a while. And where we see this most often is when it has to do with style guides. And so uh, one popular library for component-based theming that kind of gives a good overview of this is Pattern Lab. Um, this is an open source tool that allows you to organize components from smallest to largest. Um, their naming conventions by default are atoms, molecules, organisms, templates, and pages. And um, that naming convention is not required. That's just default. You can change that to whatever you want in Pattern Lab. Um, but that should give you some sense of this component-based approach, that it's starting with the smallest elements on the page, um, things like a button, things like your typ typographical elements, your H1s, etc and building up from there into components that eventually form uh, what we refer, you know, used to refer to as entire pages. So you can kind of see a nice video there on the home page. If you want to read more about Pattern Lab, I'm not going to go into that in this video, but you can visit their site. Um, it's just a nice introduction to this approach. This approach has actually been around for a while. Um, and Brad Frost, one of the uh, creators of Pattern Lab, was uh, one of the earliest proponents with his atomic design principles, which again, is just that organizational structure from smallest to largest um, and the naming convention. Um, but this approach has been widely adopted in the front end space. Um, and what it allows us to do is it allows us to build um, not only logically organized components, but um, it allows us to build things that are reusable. And so uh, I'm sure that you've heard uh, the dry reference, don't repeat yourself. Uh, this component-based approach allows us to limit uh, the amount of uh, repetitive work that we have to do uh, to a very minimal amount. So we can uh, build once, we can build a component, and we can uh, reuse that component in multiple places. Then we can build a larger component that maybe contains uh, three, you know, a molecule to use uh, the atomic design language and maybe this molecule contains three atoms. And then you can uh, see where that will grow from there. So the problem is this. In the old way, not only is our structure defined by the system that it's built in, in this case, Drupal 8, um, 
but it's not it's not dry. You could have multiple node templates in here that contain much the same markup. Um, a common pattern that was run into in Drupal theming in the past is maybe you had multiple page templates, and then you when you needed to make an edit to something more global, um, if you hadn't separated those pieces out, then you have to remember to go into each of your page templates and make that change. That's a very good example and uh, of what can happen if you're not taking this component-based approach and you have all of these templates laid out, organized by the system, and you're just repeating markup in multiple places. Uh, another problem with the old way of doing things is that we have um, system-driven variable names. And so again, if you're used to theming in Drupal 8 or Drupal in general, you might be used to these, but to a front-end developer who's not used to that, um, when they come in and uh, visit even a node template, they have to familiarize themselves with uh, the language around the variable names that are in these comments up here. Now, Drupal 8 has actually done a lot of work to minimize um, how difficult it is to actually understand. These are a lot more readable than they used to be, but they still are defined by the system. And so as you're building a component versus working in a, in a node template in Drupal, for instance, um, you can use variable names that make sense for that component. Um, you can define not only your markup and your classes, which I'll talk about in a second, um, but you can define those variable names to where they are extremely readable if they ever need to be handed off to another front-end developer. Um, so yeah, as I referenced a second ago, uh, the another problem with this old way of theming is that our markup is now driven by the system as well. And so this is actually the stable theme in Drupal. And this theme is very minimal uh, in terms of markup. So you can see in here, there is, there's not very much markup. There are uh, no classes and IDs on any of the markup in here. Um, so this is actually a really good example of Drupal kind of stepping out of the way of that system, but your markup is still being uh, driven by this node template. Um, there is the div that is created around the content of the node. Um, there's all this submitted information that has its own markup here, the title that has its own markup here. So the markup is being controlled here. And uh, also if you started adding any classes or, or IDs for um, styling hooks, then you would then be creating that, uh, that here as well. And again, it just gets you, uh, it tends to be system driven if it's done that way. And again, we are gonna get into a, a, the problem of, you know, if you have multiple content types on your website, you're gonna have multiple node templates that are just recreating that same markup. So the ideal uh, being in this component driven system is that you are defining all of those class names. One of the keys to component driven development is typically choosing a styling pattern that allows you to not only keep your components uh, dry and you're not repeating yourself, but to also use something like uh, BIM block element modifier syntax or some CSS approach that allows you to give specific class names to each element and allows you to style those in such a way that um, you're not having to uh, work with inheritance issues. It's completely separate. You could uh, add or remove components and it's not gonna affect the styles of the rest of the website. Um, in the best case scenario, when you're in this old system where you're this template-based, template-driven de uh, development, even if you do build components, so you uh, maybe separate out PHP files, or in this case, Twig files in Drupal 8, and you try to sort of separate those out logically and maybe include them and possibly even create a style guide, um, which is uh, becoming more and more a best practice and, and, and a deliverable for a client. Um, and maybe you went down this path, but the problem is, is in, the, in this old system, there's no way to automate that. And so even if you do have a style guide somewhere that's pulling from, uh, or excuse me, if, even if you do have a style guide somewhere, you're likely recreating this markup somewhere else, which means it's not a living style guide. Um, as soon as anyone comes in and uh, changes markup, markup here or uh, changes classes or IDs or styling, um, it, it has to be duplicated in the style guide for it to stay up to date, which is just not something that's ever going to happen in a realistic scenario. So 
now that we've covered the old way, hopefully that you've seen the problems. If you are a front-end developer and have been for a long time, you've probably felt these problems. These are very real problems and they're not just specific to Drupal. So in the next video, we're going to explore the solution. We're going to explore component-based theming versus this old template-based theming.